Uh, my presentation was mainly about uh, the role of the workforce in uh, implementing choosing wisely. And in general, it's really about how can the uh, workforce uh, contribute to value-based care, or uh, sometimes uh, they may not provide uh, value-based care. And it's all related to the way we train our workforce, um, the number of the workforce available to do the work, and uh, also to various other uh, societal factors and also health system uh, factors. So we talk about, uh, for example, um, uh, the workforce may not provide evidence-based medicine because uh, it's something related to the, what we call the no-gap, uh, actually lack of training or a lack of access to training material or a lack of um, uh, self-directed uh, learning or lack of regulation uh, of uh, competencies in general for the workforce. The other gap is a no-do gap where the workforce, the uh, physicians and nurses don't know what to do, but they cannot or they do not provide the care and this could be related to a very busy clinic, increasing workload and um, to other factors that are related to uh, lack of training and communication or not enough time to communicate uh, with patients and also a lack of uh, incentives uh, in the health system as well to provide quality care. I think it was, this kind of event is amazing, truly. Uh, when we started choosing wisely, um, and we, the first time we talked about it in Awatik 2019, we were just doing the project, and uh, we never uh, really uh, figured it or, or expected it will have this um, uh, reach and impact uh, in Africa. So the project started with bringing oncologists and we also included nurses and uh, we also included uh, patient advocate to uh, go over the choosing wisely uh, cancer that was developed elsewhere in North America and in India and then try to uh, use a Delphi process and come up with, uh, with Africa's own um, uh, choosing wisely, you know, about seven countries involved. And uh, since uh, then, uh, a lot of people have not heard about choosing wisely. So uh, we, um, it was presented at uh, different conferences, uh, there were publications, and then with uh, now choosing wisely on the ground with Senegal and here in Tanzania, we are seeing uh, people are actually quite motivated uh, the, to be part of choosing wisely. Uh, there is uh, a lot of awareness and interest. And to me, the most fascinating part is when people relate the Choosing Wisely uh, concept and uh, the um, way to implement it to their, own, uh, uh, to their own setting, to their own hospitals, to their own country, uh, and um, to their own workforce. So today in Tanzania, we heard a lot about all the uh, wonderful um, progress that has happened in cancer care and also the challenges uh, that are related to um, you know, uh, provision of value-based value, uh, cancer care and uh, choosing wisely when it comes to surgery, radiology, we heard in pathology, we heard in medical oncology. And uh, so I think it's really something now is entrenched in the ground. There is more interest in people coming together from across the continent, uh, looking at uh, choosing wisely in their own environment, local environment, and also collaborating with other oncologists and researchers from the rest of the continent to really improve uh, cancer outcomes in the continent. I think this should just be the uh, beginning. We are now uh, seeing what this kind of conversation can lead to. I think we need to continue with this effort, include uh, more countries, more uh, region, and to also uh, include uh, more of the uh, younger generation in this kind of conversation, and also see it uh, to trickle down to the training programs and to uh, continuous medical education. Mm -hmm.